guys, it's Jessica from Peace Out Books, and today I'm here with a video that was definitely in response to the Goodreads Choice Awards. I already did my guesses to what was going to be on the list, my reaction to the list, and now I have a list I think should have made the top 20 instead of what Goodreads put out. So these are all the books that I have read except for three. So three of these I have not read, but I think would be great contenders for this list that I think should be on this list, but I'm going to read them. Like, if not, I've already started one of them. But I am going to be chatting about these books because I think they encompass the best books of the year that published in 2020 or are ones that really broke through the romance genre and like blew up that I also really enjoyed. So not every single one is something that I think is super, 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 super popular. But a good majority of the books I think are very popular and are ones that are deserving of being on the Goodreads Choice Award list to win Best Romance of the Year. I was pretty disappointed with their list. It was kind of boring. There weren't a lot of books that were really ones I saw people obsessing over and getting excited about. They were ones that just had a lot of money behind them in publishing. So these are all ones that I love or that I think deserve to be on this list. I did ask a bunch of my friends to do this video with me, so I will link a bunch of them down below whenever they post their videos today and you can see what they thought are the best of the year that should have been on the Good Reach Choice Awards list. So I will go ahead and get through them. I'll save the historicals for last. I know the historical romances aren't that popular of a genre, but I have, I think, four on here that I think should have definitely been on this list, but they were not anywhere on the Good Reach Choice Awards. But I will save the historicals for last, like I said, and I'll go ahead and get to the romances that should have made this list. I think I kept like four or five from the original list out of 20. So the first one I have is one that recently released and I think it is this author's best work yet and that is What Was Meant to Be by Hebe Tyler. How this book just made me so addicted to the story. It is so good. And I think it was QB's best performing book numbers wise with where it went on the Amazon charts. She got, I think, up to number 12 in the Amazon store on release day, which is very, very exciting for her. This one is a story about a girl who had gotten together with her dad's and mom's best friend. Like they were all three best friends in college and she got together with him when she turned 18. They had a two year relationship. He broke up with her, completely broke her heart, left for three years. Here's that she She's engaged and comes back to win her back and so it's very very spicy. QB Tyler is probably the spiciest book yet. Very taboo and forbidden. So angsty because she is engaged but she's like he's the love of my life and she's mad at him for leaving her and breaking her heart but he's the love of her life. So it was so good and definitely one that I think should have been on this list for best of the year because best of the year. I do not have a lot of truly published romances when it comes to the contemporary romances on this list, but this one came out the day the Choice Awards came out, so it was a contender to be picked based on their timeline restrictions, and it was not on there, and I was flabbergasted that this book was not on this list. Before I Let Go by Kennedy Ryan, I read this a couple days before it released, and this one is just so emotional and raw and heart-wrenching, and I loved it so much. This one is a second chance romance between a married couple, and it does delve really deeply into their relationship and what broke it apart. It does have to do with loss of a child, so definitely know that before you pick this up, but this one is just Kennedy Ryan knows how to write deeply emotional romances with flawed characters who have to really examine their relationship, what's not making it work, what can make it work. I think every one of her romances does that, and I'm completely pulled into her stories, and this one's no different. And I love, though, how they had a relationship previously and they just did not know how to work together to cope with a loss and so the heroine especially was going through a really hard time she was diagnosed with depression she was seeing a therapist and she's like I feel suffocated in this relationship and I can't survive everything going on. So she asks for a divorce and we see the repercussion of their kids. How her daughter blames her for the divorce and how her husband or ex-husband is now moving on and she has to see him date and that's really the catalyst of wait a second I kind of still love you. And so it was just amazing, so emotional. I love this book so much and easily a favorite of the year and it should have been on this list hands down should have been. Okay, so the next one is by an author that for sure has blown up in the romance community this year, and I am obsessed with her. The next two are actually, and so these authors have published a couple books at least that could be on this list and so I'm gonna pick my favorites. So the first one's Elsie Silver. Elsie Silver has just taken everybody by storm with her cowboy romances. I loved Flawless, but Heartless has taken the number one spot for me because this was the best small town single dad grumpy sunshine nanny romance age gap like every single trope I'm obsessed with 
this book has it and the banter between the characters the banter between the characters and the family I love the family aspect in here Cade's family is awesome his brother got book one and he gets book two and it is the best friend of the heroine of book one and she ends up being his nanny to his son and his son's amazing and I just love this book so much like everything about this book Cade is really dedicated to running his farm but he also really wants to compete like his brother does not at the level his brother does but he does want to compete and so the heroine pushes him too but she also doesn't let him be the grump that he is around everybody else she's like you're gonna be nice to me and you're not gonna be rude and thoughtless about other people's feelings and so it's really sweet but it's also very spicy as well so much tension and chemistry between them like this book absolute favorite of the year like hands down the next author that I was shocked was not on the good read choice words list but I think it's because she is not yet truly published because her books are coming out soon with bloom I believe and that is Sarah Kate I'm choosing praise I've only read praise and give me more and praise is still my favorite it is a salacious players club she has just taken again the romance community by storm with her releases this year she is just blown up as an author and I love it so much for her and this one is a age gap romance boyfriend's dad romance and he owns a pleasure club and the heroine doesn't really know a lot about that she's going to him for money her his son owes her and he thinks she's his new secretary so things get a little you know and then they realize what happens and she ends up being hired to work for him in a non club way but she gets intrigued i loved emerson so much like this was amazing i love how it deals with having a safe space to explore things you're interested in and so much communication and consent and i just loved it so much so praise is my favorite i do need to read the other two but sarah and kate for sure should have been on this list hands down okay so i feel like there's a couple authors where i'm like they had so many releases that were amazing that should have made this list but and i'm like do i go with the fan favorite or my favorite because i'm thinking of devney perry she should have had a book on this list devney perry is so popular this Year. she's been popular for a while but I feel like she's really blown up this year and these two books especially I think people love Juniper Hill better I saw more negative reviews for this book but this one's my favorite because of the angst and I feel like there weren't a lot of angsty books on the Goodreads Choice Awards this year and that's one of my favorite things to read in romances but I do think Devney Perry should have made it these are small town romances this one though is a single parent romance Grum Sunshine kind of workplace because she gets a job at the hotel he's a chef at but she has a literal baby and it's so good. I love this one, but this one is a second chance. The hero completely broke her heart by marrying her best friend, and now it's years later, he's back in town to win her back, and he is a, like, UFC fighter. <gasps> so good, but the series in general, one of these should have made the list. Like, how was she not on this list? I don't know. I love her. They should have been there. Another one that I feel like uh, blew up everywhere, and I feel like this author is pretty popular, but this book especially I've seen a ton of people reading, is The Words by Ashley Jade. I read this because my friends loved it, specifically Tori from Novel Life really spurred me to read this one because she loved it. I'm betting you it's on her list as well, but this one's a second chance, which has easily become one of my favorite tropes this year. Second chance, enemies kind of to lovers now, and rockstar romance. So they fell in love in high school, he broke her heart, she detests him now. He has gone down a really bad path, he's a famous rock star, but he's really into sex, drugs, alcohol. He lost someone very close to him, and so he's just spiraling. And so they keep on hiring sober companions for him, but none of them last. So they're like, we need someone who hates him, who will keep him aligned and not let him toy with them. And so someone they grew up with is in the band too, and he's like, I know the perfect person. And so they hire her, she needs the money, and they end up falling in love anyways. And it's just amazing. It's long, it's so long, but you do not realize how long it is. I flew through this book, so emotional, so so good oh my gosh and I wish I read it before meeting her because I did get to see her at book bonanza and I hadn't read it yet and now I'm like I want to just like tell her how amazing this book is and I'm so excited because she is writing a duet for side characters in here it's gonna be amazing but definitely a top read of the year okay so this one I don't know I don't know if a lot of people would agree but I love this book so much and more people need to read it and that is the devil of Devlin by BB Easton this book shocked me so much because I didn't see a lot of people talking about it and then I read it and I literally devoured this book in like a day and a half. I could not put it down. This one is a second chance romance as well and it's like childhood friends to lovers. So I don't know if you would call it second chance because it never really got a first chance but they meet when the heroine visits Ireland to visit a relative. I think someone had died so she's there with her mom and they decide to come back every summer and it's very just like whimsical because she goes into the woods and like plays like make-believe 
leave and meets this boy who is very, very damaged and tortured, and people say he's like the son of the devil, and so he is being raised by a priest, and he's being abused, and so he finds magic in her and their time together, and they end up playing together, and they meet every week in every summer. So like for a week every summer she visits and they meet every time, but then her life drastically changes. She goes through abuse and very, very bad things. And now they're adults. She is engaged or dating someone I don't remember and visits and meets him again. And now he is kind of in the mafia where he is like their killer and he has a very bad reputation and it's their romance and it's so action packed. It definitely reads like a mafia romance. It's very dark and they bond together and they have to talk about their tragic past together. And it's so good. I love this so much. I already want to reread it because I just remember not being able to put this down because it's so fast paced and I just felt for these characters so much. They were so vivid and just the things that they went through and how they bonded over their shared past that they had. I just love this book so much. Oh my gosh. Read it please. Favorite of the year and I feel like it should be on this list. Okay, so another author that you should not be surprised is on here is Catherine Cowell. So I have my two favorites by her. I feel like, I don't know what people loved more. I don't know. So I have Hidden Waters and Fractured Sky. Fractured Sky, I feel like I saw the most hype for. It was her newest book, but Hidden Waters is one of my favorites. Hidden Waters, these are both in the Tattered and Torn series. They're small town romantic suspense. This one, she was in a cult and she finally gets out and she moves into the house of her cousin's husband. He owns it, but then her cousin's husband's brother is back in town for being like Doctors Without borders. So they're roommates and they slowly become friends and it's a really slow burn sweet friend to lovers romance. He helps her experience things she never got to because she was in that cult like drinking different kinds of pops, eating different kinds of foods, driving, like all these things she'd never done. He does it with her and it's so cute and then of course someone's trying to kill her but you know. Then we have Fractured Sky. Again someone is trying to go after our heroine but she was kidnapped as a child and has had a really hard time letting people in since then especially her family and so she decides to move out though because she's feeling very smothered by them and our hero he works at a horse rehabilitation farm where he rehabilitates like really damaged horses and animals and she has just like a way with animals they just understand each other and so she likes to watch him work and they have this silent agreement that she will come around and then he starts talking to her and says why don't you move into the house on my ranch on my farm and work for me and you'll be able to get out from your very just smothering situation with your family. So she does and it's a very slow burn romance as well but it's so good. The heroes in these are just the sweetest. They develop very slowly but they really learn to trust each other and open up to each other and earn each other's trust. That's really what these romances are about and of course we have some suspense to keep you on the edge of your seat but I love these books. She should definitely be on this list. One that I definitely agree should be on this list and that I hope wins because this book has been in the top in Amazon since it released in like February and that is Things We Never Got Over by Lucy Score. This one only I think got picked because Bloom finally picked it up but this one is a small town grump sunshine romance that was just so fun. I really think it's approachable for a lot of different kinds of readers and that's why people have been loving it and reading it. While it's long it went by very fast. Our heroine has a twin sister who is an awful person and the heroine goes to the small town her sister's living in and her sister ends up stealing from her and dumping her like teenage daughter on her sister and so Everyone thinks that she's her sister that no one likes, but she's in town. Now she's taking care of her niece she didn't even know existed and falling for the town grump and it's really, really cute. I really liked it. I liked the whole family aspect of her really taking in her niece and growing really close with her and the whole town aspect. There's a little bit of suspense at the end that felt a little cliche, but I thought it was really great and I definitely see the appeal to the wider audience and think that this is definitely deserving of the list. So then I have have Everything For You by Chloe Lee. So this one is an MM soccer romance and it is a like their teammates and an age gap and the one hero that's older that's a captain. He has chronic pain because he has been a professional athlete for over a decade and he is just like broken down. The other hero is actually his neighbor and he's definitely like the sunshine. It's a definitely grump sunshine and he has siblings who have some different disabilities and so he has a lot of accessibility in his house and it's super cute. Like he helped him shower one and was like, here, I know you're in a lot of pain, like I have things to help you and it was so sweet how he was there for him and they started bonding over being co-captains and there was like a one bed situation when they were 
were going on a trip to a game and they had to fly with each other and one was a nervous flyer and there were just so many sweet moments in here and I just love this so much. I love Chloe Lisa's books. There's only a couple in the series I don't love love like gave five stars and this one I gave five stars. Such a good sports romance. I feel like I don't have like any sports romance on this list but this one definitely should be on this list. And then one that I do agree. I can't find my copy but it is Delilah Green doesn't care. This was on the original list. I highly highly recommend this book because it was such a good sapphic romance and so the one is a photographer coming to back to her hometown to photograph her stepsister's wedding and she has a bit of animosity with her step sibling and her stepmom and she doesn't like feel like she ever fit in in the town and the other heroine is a single mom who is her stepsister's best friend and she meets her at a bar and she does not recognize who the girl coming in is and realizes who she is and that they knew each other in high school and their romance goes from there. I really liked it. There was a lot to do with family and understanding where people come from in their relationships and how you might misunderstand how things happened in the past and how people aren't thinking the way you think they're thinking. I don't want to spoil anything, but there was a lot they had to delve into into their past, and the romance was so good. I really loved the whole single mom, and she was still trying to get over her ex, and I just really love this book. I definitely, I definitely agree for this being on the list. Another one that I agree on is Part of Your World by Abby Jimenez. This one is a surprise because I love the first two books by Abby Jimenez, but I was not a fan of Life's Too Short, so I kind of wrote her off, and I wasn't in a rush to read anything else that she wrote. This one, Small Town, age gap with an older woman and it was so good. So the heroine is kind of really overworked and she's driving through a small town. She gets into an accident or like has a flat tire or something and so this guy helps her out. She goes to the bar to wait for the tow truck and the guy is there and he kind of helps her out of other guys hitting on her. They end up going home together having an awesome night together and she just can't stop coming back and he though is everything she doesn't need so she is in the process of a uh, breakup and it's like feels like a divorce but it's not but it's a breakup and he is like everything her parents want for her because she's a doctor he's a doctor and super super successful this guy is not rich he works at a bed and breakfast and makes furniture on the side and he's just a pretty simple small town guy and she is falling in love with him and he has dreams and aspirations too and she wants to support support him but she is like how is this gonna fit in my real world and it is so good I absolutely love this book and I was very surprised though like I did not expect to love it as much as I did definitely one of my favorites of the year. I have so many still to go. So then I have Funny Feelings by Tara DeWitt. This one is such a surprise because I have not read this author before, but it is Single Dad, Age Gap. He is her manager. She is a comedian. They have to fake date. It was so sweet, and I'm just obsessed with, like, sweet, cozy romances lately, and I love Friends to Lovers. They were friends for a very long time, and we get flashbacks to when they both were kind of thinking of moving into something more, but then something stopped them from doing that, and it was just so good. I am obsessed with Tara to it now. I need to read more by her. Please read this one. Definitely favorite of the year. I gotta get through these. I've already been filming for much longer than I thought I would. So then I have Honey Trap by Tay James. This one so good. It is very action-filled. She's an assassin and is kind of falling for another assassin who stalks her and is obsessed with her, but then she gets a job that is pretty much a suicide mission. They know someone's trying to kill her by sending her on really hard jobs, and she takes it because she's very stubborn, and she falls for the guy she's supposed to kill, who ends up kidnapping her because he thinks she's trying to kill him. So she has to put on this role that she's not trying to kill him, and it is so good. It is so funny how good she is at acting and trying to act like the damsel in distress when she is in control the entire time. And and apparently it's going to end up being a menage somehow with the three of them together, but so far she just has separate relationships where she's falling for the guy that kidnapped her, but falling for the guy that's stalking her, and it's just so good. I have three that I have not read yet, and then three historicals. So I definitely think Twisted Hate deserves a spot on this list. Anna Huang is another author that absolutely blew up with her romances and this one I've seen as being people's favorites. I know Twisted Lies is also book four that came out but people love Josh and I don't know what her name is. I just know his name is Josh. So Jules I think. I need to read these books. I definitely plan on actually picking these up next week but I definitely think Anna Huang deserves a spot on this list, as well as You Made a Fool of Death with Your Beauty by Quick A. Mezzi. I'm actually in the middle of reading this right now, and she is in the process of falling for the dad of the guy she is currently hooking up with that takes her on, like, this vacation with her. She sees the dad, and she was like, whew. I've never felt these feelings before, and I am loving it so far, and she is also getting over the death of her husband that's been gone for five years, and it's definitely has an emotional side to it, and I'm excited to see where that romance goes, so 
definitely think it should be on this list. And then I have one that's not on this list that I have not read yet, but I think should be on this list. And that is A Lady for Duke by Alexis Hall. This one is a historical romance that came out that I saw so many people love, and I am absolutely going to read it soon because I need to. And this one is with a trans heroine, and people think that she has died, and so that's how she was able to come with her new identity, and she is falling for her best friend from before they thought that she died. So I'm very excited. It sounds just very emotional and angsty. Definitely want to read this one. That is going to lead into my three historicals on this list. Three of my all-time favorite authors. We have The Marquest Makes His Move by Diana Quincy. This one took me by surprise because it had something happen and I was like, how the heck are these two people going to be together? And they are. She is a map maker, but she is married to someone who takes credit for her maps because she is a woman and that's a male-dominated industry. She can't be known that she's doing this. And so she married him because her father passed away and left it to him. And so she married him and she's making her maps. Well, one of the maps is drawn incorrectly and cheats the Marquess out of land. So he goes undercover as a footman in their household in order to figure out how to get his land back and to see if he was cheated out of his land. And so he falls in love with her as her footman and it is so good and then you're like wait she's married how can they be together there is an HEA don't worry but I love this book I love it when someone goes undercover and it's really good then one I recently read is a matter of temptation by Stacey Reed this one is so good as well our heroines the state is crumbling down her parents died her brother's not managing their funds well and he is trying to gamble to earn money cheats and then gets caught cheating, but in order to get away with it, he accuses the other man of cheating. So then they propose a duel, and she is like, you're literally going to die. And so she decides to go in his place, and because she's really good at sword fighting, and she challenges the guy that challenged her brother, like disguised as a man, and beats him. And then he figures out she's a woman, and asks for her to be his secretary. And it goes on from there. Their banter's hilarious. I love this one so much. Oh my gosh, I just really love their relationship and how it started and how she's doing things women shouldn't be able to be doing in society and another amazing book by Stacey Reed. I'm not surprised she's on this list. And the last one's another all-time favorite historical author of mine. That's Joanna Shoup, The Bride Goes Rogue. I'm obsessed with everything this one writes and I'm excited to read her new book which comes out in January but this one our heroine she was told by her father she is engaged to this guy so she's been waiting around for over a year she finally confronts him and is like let's plan our wedding and he is like what a joke I'm not marrying you she's devastated she just wasted so much time finding a husband waiting for this guy who's not gonna marry her so she decides to go out and have fun she's like fine I don't care about my reputation anymore I'm gonna go to a scandalous party and so she does and things go from there she ends up being with a guy who was supposed to marry her. I don't want to spoil things, but mm, this book was so good, and I'm excited for her friend's story because it's going to be amazing, but this is just, I love how they end up falling for each other, and the hero was so adamant that he didn't want to be with her, and then starts being attracted to her. It's so good. I flew through those last ones, but I'm spending way too much time on this video, so let me know what you would have added to this list. If you agree with my nominations, what you thought was good on the original list, I would love to hear. Check out everyone else's videos. There's over 10 of us doing this video today, so you will get tons of recommendations, so watch them, and I will link them all below as I find them, but that is all I have. As always, thank you so much for watching, and have a good day. Bye.